Well, welcome to Josh Kerr, Olympic medalist, joining us uh, from across the pond in America. Delighted to, to see you, Josh, and catch up with you. How pleased were you to, to claim that bronze medal in Tokyo when you've been very bullish about your, your medal hopes? You know, it was uh, it's a long time coming. I've obviously been waiting for this chance for, you know, two years, especially just when it got pushed back. So, you know, it's kind of been in the forefront of my mind for the longest time. You put a plan together and you just, uh, you kind of hope and pray that it goes, it goes to plan because there's all these little things that can go wrong. Um, and so, yeah, it was a year that I'm very proud of the way that I handled myself, stuck to my plan, stuck my plan all the way through. And uh, it, I was able to come away with some hardware. So that was a pretty, pretty good result for me. Yeah, and I think I heard you say that Keely Hodgkinson winning uh, silver in the women's 800 a couple of days before your final sort of just, just gave you additional motivation in a sort of, I want a slice of that kind of way. Yeah, I think, you know, everyone, everyone experiences that in their own way uh, in, in anything they do. If anyone you're running with, training with, know, like has some success, you're like, wow, that was, that was awesome. And watch them go through something that you want to go through. So you know, when she came back, I think myself and the rest of the 15 boys, Whiteman and, and Hayward, were, were playing pool or something like that. And she just came down uh, to hang out a little bit. And she had her medal there. And it was it was really cool. And it was like a big uh, respect moment. Um, and so for me, it was like, I kind of took myself away because I was, you know, some people can get kind of carried away of like, excited for someone else. But that's not what I was there for, you know. So I, it was it was a very big motivator to say, you know, this is possible. Uh, it's very realistic, and it's time to time to do it for yourself. So, yeah, that was a very big moment for me that I can kind of go back to and be like, that was a moment that I told myself that this had to happen. So, well, just on that timeline, then a couple of days after that for Keeley, obviously Laura Muir took silver in the fifteen. I don't know how much time you'd have had to be aware of sort of online reaction in Scotland, but it you know it was massive. What was was that an, another motivation? I didn't follow the, so like, I don't have my social medias on when I'm ever at major championships. Um, but I did watch Laura's performance and her interviews and that whole experience that she had as well. Um, I didn't have that uh, as, as close as that personal where I didn't see her medal or anything like that because she was rushed off to do all this media and we were pretty close to doing our, our stuff as well. But her, I think her post-race interview she she said something along the lines of how hard she'd worked for how long and that was another big moment for me as well where you know everyone works so hard and everyone puts all this like effort in and, and to me you could see the emotion of how how much that meant for her to get that and that was a very cool moment and and for you know her obviously being scottish and and you know racing in the same races that she's been when, when growing up and stuff like that, it was a very realistic moment for me to be like, all right, like I've watched, I've watched Laura grow up and, and race all the way throughout the years. And she's got, she's claimed a fantastic silver medal. So, you know, yeah, I mean, you can grab motivation from anywhere in the Olympics, but it's very nice to have, you know, medals close to home. And um, so that was pretty cool. But yeah, Laura's one was, uh, that was an inspiring race as well, I would say. And just the way that she ran it with the grit and determination and, and being able to, to beat Safan Hassan in that, in that triple kind of, uh, you know, ro road to triple and, and her to just say, you know what, I don't, I don't care. I'm going to go after what I think I can, I can get. So that was, yeah, that was very cool. Well, just on your own final itself there, and, and, and I watched it back and it's, it's, it's a very enjoyable three and a half minutes to watch did you always feel you were well placed? Because there was a stage, I think, maybe with about two laps ago when you were seventh and moving into sixth, I think at eight hundred. But but were you sort of ready to strike at that point? Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you asked Danny, that's not. It wasn't the plan. But like our our plan B is always to, um, well, our plan A is always to just trust instinct and and do what we feel is right at the time. Because I've raced a lot of times in my career and I feel like I've gained knowledge from every single one and I know what I'm doing even if I'm kind of an autopilot so it it was not the plan to be that far back but I knew it was it'd be quick so we had a um a kind of speech from a, a local MMA gym here in Albuquerque and um what he kept telling us is that it was hunting season and he's like if there's anyone in front of you just start hunting them and I was like all right that's fine with me 
So like that was kind of my mentality. Like I was at the back, but I had all these people to hunt in front of me. And I, you, if you rewatch it, you just, I'll just like slip past people like slowly and it just gets motivation just through the roof, just get in the next one, get the next one, get the next one. And yeah. that was kind of the way that my brain was working was like, I know how to run even splits. I'd, I'd ran a, a, a kind of solo, not solo, but um, a, a front run 331 and a half. And, and I knew how each split would feel. And so as soon as I saw the first split, I was like, okay, you're just going to have to run splits to run sub 330. And if you can do that, you're going to medal and just keep getting them one by one. So that was kind of my mentality going through it all. But I wouldn't say that was the plan beforehand, no. <laughs> well, let's just talk for a moment about your Edinburgh AC background. Um, Chris O'Hare and Jake Whiteman had both won medals at international competitions over, over sort of reasonably recent years. How pleased are you to have joined that club role of honour? Yeah, I think, um, you know, both of those guys are, are huge motivations to me. Um, fantastic men uh, that I can, that I can, if I message one of them out of the blue today asking for some advice, they would come back to me within the hour to, to kind of respond and help me out. So that's the kind of, um, the kind of men that they are. And yeah, I think it was, it was time for me to kind of try and grab that first medal like, like they did and, and, and continue my career like that. And, you know, I was, it was watching Jake get the or get Chris get the Scottish record and and I think we all discussed because we were at all at London 2017 together the world champs like we we got to get the Scottish record under 330 and like all three of us were kind of discussing that and you know the first time Whiteman did it I was like oh I want that to be me you know uh, and so I was very glad at that point that I was able to get the the Scottish record so that was that was a big thing for me as well um because I'd been, I'd never had it. And, you know, I, I'd ran times that were faster than it in the last five years, but I was never able to get it when someone else wasn't, you know, catching fire. So yeah, those, those two are, are big motivations for me. And uh, I would like to say pretty good friends with, uh, for me as well. Yeah. Well, I know Dave Campbell was your coach in your sort of original early teen years. And I think Dave also coached Chris. I'm pretty sure I'm right about that. But the, would there be other people involved like Terry O'Hare, Chris's dad, and, and maybe Colin Scrimger as well? These volunteers at the club that, that, that you know, are putting the effort in to, to help young athletes and give them the best chance? You know, I, I started off with a, a man, Eric Fisher. Uh, I believe he still coaches at Edinburgh AC. He was a, he was a fantastic coach for, for my age and stage. I think, you know, motivations through the roof when, you, when you're able to get a coach that can keep you in the sport and and yeah then I moved along to to Dave and and, and Terry and D Dave was fantastic I think he he was the first time that I was at training that I felt like it was a step into like being a little bit more professional obviously I was still pretty young at the time and um, so we kept it fun but it, we worked really really hard and I think that's where I got my my work e ethic from I was able to do it with some fantastic athletes around me and my brother was there as well and so yeah Dave was Dave was a, was a great coach and I really enjoy looking back at those memories and I'll, I'll always, you know, we email a lot and I phoned him right after British trials. I phoned him right after the Olympic Games. Like we're, we're pretty close still and I'm, I'm very happy about that relationship. That's great to hear, Josh. And, and I think I'm right in saying that it's interesting at this point because we've just had our age group championships in Scotland under 13 and under 15. I'm pretty sure you were a bit of a serial winner around those age groups in, on the track and also in cross country. But I've also read from you recently that you didn't take that too seriously or get too carried away. And I think your family was probably quite helpful in that. How important do you think it is just to have sort of incremental goals rather than, you know, me, you know obviously it's okay to have the aspirations, but maybe not to get too carried away. Yeah, that's, that's, that's huge. That was like a massive, massive part of growing up within, you know, the Scottish, uh, Scottish champs and, and within Scottish athletics. It was like, you know, everyone can get carried away on power of 10 and look at this time and trying to work your way up the ranks. And I obviously did that. And for me, that was what I did. And my parents were able to control that a little bit and just said, look, you know, no one remembers the under, like your under 13 championships, Josh. What they'll remember is how you moved up uh, slowly but surely got your incremental goals got a pb every year and then started running you know world-class times when you start getting the age of you know 17 18 19 and that was that was always the plan and you can run those times but it's it's when it gets carried away in the training uh, it's when you're pushing the mileage or you're doing too much in the sessions and stuff like that if you're 
if you're in your under 13 and you're you're really worried about mileage then <laughs> you're doing something wrong so yeah my my kind of philosophy was i'll i'll train to what i'm told you know you know within the guidelines of what i've been told uh, and then that's what was going to end up on race day and i'll just give everything i can on race day and you can be as serious as you want on race day you can you know you can bring bring your music and blast it and get ready and go and smash a race but yeah i think if you can if you can really nurture an athlete at that age to make sure that they're not overtraining they're going to continue to have pbs every year because they're growing and they're you know they're learning from the mistakes that they make i think we'll maybe get the development team to talk to you about uh, writing writing some writing some of that down perhaps but you are of course a graduate from new mexico university and also a Brooks Beast athlete. So what about America and the collegiate system there where you, you performed extremely well over a number of years? But what did that give you? Is that where the race experience comes from? Yeah, I think that's something that sometimes um, people in the UK lose is like we, in the US system, we have to race um, this race or conference. So there's a, like six or seven universities that are just put into this meet and you're obviously trying to win the meet. And so there's, there's, a, there's a fair few meets like that where you're racing guys that you'll be racing at the major championships in the NCAA, um, and you just got to tactically win the race. There's no pacers. There's none of this um, trying to run fast times. It's just kind of learning your race craft a little bit. So, you know, you do that three or four times a year, uh, and then you obviously go to the, uh, the kind of qualifying championships and then the main championships. And so you just race a lot, and so you learn – um you learn a little bit more about how you like to race how different training can kind of affect how each race is and uh, build up to races and things like that so you know we probably like i probably only ran one or two pace races a year um versus like if i was in the uk and running a bunch of bmcs and, and those were the only races i'd run so if i was doing it within the uk system i would obviously just go uh, do a lot of kind of local meets, maybe do some Scottish, uh, Scottish athletics meets, Scottish champs. Those are the kind of races that are going to help your craft. Um, and so that's, that's where I learned to race uh, in my early years. And then I just took that to kind of a bigger stage in the U S. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's, that helped a lot because I feel like I know my racing strategies pretty well. And, and if something doesn't go exactly to plan, I can just kind of go back to basics uh, and I know what my basics are pretty well. Well, having said that, I'm coming. You know, we're coming to the times now, and you you did get a Scottish record there, three twenty nine oh five, I think it was in Tokyo. Mo Farah's British record is three twenty eight eighty one. How how fast do you think you can go? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. I think you know, I I feel like I was I was in shape to run three twenty seven something this year. Um, you know, obviously that was my third round in five days, so or yeah, third round five or six days. And uh, I think I went 336, 332, 329. So I'm very happy with that kind of three races. But I think in the right race, the right conditions, 327 was on the cards. Um, and now we're just knocking at the door at the 26s, really. So I don't know. I think I don't, I don't want to set a limit. I would like to say that next year I'm going to obviously try and at least run the British record. I think that's a good stepping stone in the right direction. I haven't really been in any Diamond League races I think I've been in one Diamond League race in my whole career. Um, it just hasn't really been my style this far. But maybe it, 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 start, it will start being my style a bit more. But yeah, I think, you know, look, if you want to be the best in the sport right now, it sounds like you might even have to run a world record. So I'm, I'm not setting any limits right now. That's actually, that, that's very interesting because I think you did say that, I saw you say that you wouldn't be running chasing a time after on the eighth of August or beyond the seventh, you know, beyond the seventh, which was the day of the final. And I think also that you and your coach had planned, had felt that you had to run sub three thirty on the seventh of August to be in the mix. I mean, that's a remarkable sort of detailed planning for it to come off. Yeah, my coach is a nerd. He uh, he's a real nerd. He knows his stuff, and it's it's really it's really uh, easy to stand on the line and have a bunch of confidence in your training setup when your coach knows exactly what he's doing. And you know, I can sit there and um, ask him questions about anything that we're doing, and he'll have a detailed response. He has the qualifications to kind of back himself. So he um, that was a decision that we made back in the end of 2019 because we were going to try and do it obviously in the Olympic final in 2020, but. 
um, that obviously got pushed a little bit. So we, we had another meeting about it and we were like, okay, August 7th, like August 7th, sub, sub 3.30. And, and uh, the training was shown that it was possible. So, you know, we thought we'd definitely be able to get on the podium. Let's see what kind of medal we'd be able to get. And, you know, obviously it was a fantastic final and, and I gave it all that I could and uh, obviously came up with third. But yeah, right now the, the sport's very interesting and it's, it's, it's real, really quick. And, you know, talk of the world record hasn't, hasn't happened in a long time for, for our distance. And, you know, uh, a, a world champs in Eugene, Oregon next year where kind of my uh, sponsors are based and, uh, some of my girlfriend's family are and, and my family will come over it's going to be it's going to be a good setup for uh for hopefully a world championship right there so uh that, those are the kind of goals that i have and, and going back to saying that you know i won't race after august 7th i just didn't see the point like for me i love major championships it's what i'm here for i'm not here to run the flashy times on the, on a day that doesn't matter so that's that's my big philosophy is run the big times when it matters and, and hopefully come away with some good medals for, for Team GB or, or whoever I'm running for. I'm reliably informed by Mark Pollard that that attitude uh, has was still was there some years ago when the European under 20s were on, uh, where I think you were targeting uh, and you did you did win the European under 20 title. I think I'm right in saying uh, you, you you weren't thinking about the races after that and the times that you were going to try to run. So. It's good. It's good that your approach has been consistent. Let's let's put it that way. Um, so just just before we finish up, uh, you, you've you've mentioned twenty twenty two and the world champs. But do you think we'll see you in in one, two, or three different championships next summer? I'll say at least two, and uh, uh, two. I would say you know, I uh, I've never ran a Commonwealth Games. I'll hopefully be selected. Um, but <laughs> yeah, no, I. I I just love major championship running and coming back. You know, Mark was uh, um, incremental when it came to that that European under twenties. Uh, he was he just took me from Dave and kind of changed a couple of little things when Dave um, retired and and you know brought me from probably being deep in the dumps a little bit uh, to to a European under twenty championship. So. Big shout out to Mark, Mark Pollard for that because that was that was some phenomenal coaching on on his his behalf. And then, yeah, I, you know, I would love to run the Commonwealth Games. Those are the kind of things you know when we're growing up in, you know, the Scottish champs. Always watching, always watching those those uh, events and being able to run for Scotland would just be a really really cool thing because it's something that I haven't done in so long. And not being able to come home, obviously, on on a kind of monthly basis is obviously not really allowed over here um, with my contract out here. But yeah, that's a that's a big goal for next summer. And and uh, you know, be, it's pretty much the same as as a world champs. You just don't have the Americans or the Norwegians. So I just have to deal with the Kenyans when it comes to the fifteen. But uh, yeah, I'm very excited about next summer because, like like you said, I'm a I'm a championship racer, and and that's what I'm here for. We are completely unbiased, Josh, but I will possibly have a quiet word with the selectors in terms of Team Scotland. Um, just finally then, about your family support, and I, I didn't quite realise this, I knew your brother Jake was a Scotland international rugby, but your, your father John was, was involved in professional rugby as well. So, I, I, so was there a point where you might have you know, been lost to athletics? You know, I, I grew up thinking I was going to be a rugby player because that's like our school was very rugby orientated. And obviously when you've got uh, a dad that was able to coach you and we'd always go uh, and try and do extra stuff. And, you know, we, me and my brother would always have fun doing that. And, you know, running was always like when I first did it and I won a race and it was all because of me, it was an individual part of it. That was when I realized that, you know, maybe this is going to be something for me because I just, I really enjoy um, the pressure being on, on me and not anyone else. So when I was in big rugby games, it was like, oh, like hopefully our whole team will turn up and, and play really well. But when it's like getting ready for a race, it's like, I want to run really well. And if it goes badly, then it was probably my fault. So that was, that was a big thing. But yeah, my, my parents are both extremely supportive and, and my dad's knowledge of, of uh, sport has come into play even up to today, like it's, um, he takes a massive fascination in, 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 you know, running and, and it's, uh, it's pretty fun. It's annoying at times when he's right about things and I know he's right, but I just don't want to admit it. 
And it's the same with my brother, because obviously my brother ran um, quite a bit as well when he was growing up. So they both know the sport really well and sometimes better than me because I'm, I'm doing it. Um, and so sometimes they just bring it back to more simplistic terms. And my mom was just like so, so supportive. When she's a physio and I was able to kind of get free physio through my, my whole younger career. And I was able to kind of stay away from injuries, which helped my progression. Um, so yeah, the family support was was huge, and I'm able to go home um, pretty soon and, and kind of present that medal to them as well. So that's going to be an exciting time. Well, look forward to that. And I think you said to us earlier that you're also planning to to take it back to the club and and, and hopefully just inspire some young athletes as well. So we really look forward to seeing you then. And, and I think I think you'll be I think you might actually be surprised at the the sort of strength of feeling and the strength of support that there is in Scotland and across the Scottish athletics community. Because it was absolutely massive uh, on our social media channels, uh, you know, on uh, August the seventh. Yeah, thanks very I'm much, Josh. Excited. Thank you very much for this chat. It's uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get back home and and yeah, show off that medal to everyone that's kind of supported that. So thank you very much.